All right, guys, and welcome to today's video. We're going to be discussing training splits. Okay, this is a question I still get asked on a very regular basis. So I thought I'd make an updated video on the topic. Now, there's five key things which I'm going to talk about because these five things are going to heavily influence what training split you should be doing. And that is the experience of the lifter. Okay, second of all, how intense they train. Thirdly, how frequently can they train? Fourthly, general overall goals. And fifth, just preferences and enjoyment. So we're gonna start off with the trainee's lifting experience. Now, if we take for example, somebody who has just started going to the gym, or is going back to the gym after taking a very long period of time off the gym, then my recommendation would be to do full body splits. And the reason behind that is, they only need to create a small amount of stimulus in order to see progress, okay? So they could technically do one exercise per muscle group and that be enough for them to see progress, okay? So they can train a full body in a workout, maybe take a rest day after that, do the same thing again, a rest day, same thing again, and that is gonna be more than enough. They don't need to do more in order to see progress. They'll just be overdoing it, okay? Now, the problem with this is in order to see further progress, to build more muscle, you need to create larger stimulus. So let's say, for example, if that person was to continue with the full body split, they would then need to do, let's say, for example, three exercises, two to three exercises per muscle group in order to create that stimulus. And if you try to do that all in one session, you could go from doing a six to seven exercise session to doing a 14 to 15 exercise session, or even let's say, for example, further down the line, that would then become a 21 to 22 exercise session. So the big problem with this, obviously your workout is gonna take forever to complete. And without a doubt, maybe after an hour or so, you're gonna fatigue. And all those exercises you do at the very end, that you're not gonna execute them as well as you can do, okay? So this is when, or I would recommend, be the point where you split things up, okay? Instead of doing full body, you would either split it up into upper and lower, or you could do, for example, posterior, anterior. So pushing quads, pulling hamstrings, glutes, and so on. Then that way you can split things up and then you can do more exercises for particular muscle groups and not have your workouts take forever to complete. Next point I'm gonna move on to is training availability. So how many times can you train per week? Now, if we took someone who can only go to the gym two, three times per week, my recommendation would again be to do the full body split. Okay, so you can at least hit muscle groups two or three times per week. I know a lot of people like to do a push-pull leg split, but in this scenario, I really don't know whether that would be optimal because you really are going a full week before you're hitting that same muscle group again. So you're better off doing some kind of a split where you can hit one muscle group at least, let's say for example, twice per week. And if it's a really lagging muscle group, then maybe even three times per week. But if you compared the progress of someone who was doing push-pull legs versus full body split three times per week and they did that consistently, it would more than likely be the case that that person who does full body is gonna see more overall growth, okay? But that's not taken into consideration intensity, recovery, and so on. If you can train more frequently, then you can afford to make your split a little bit more complex where you're hitting two to three muscle groups per session. Whether you do like a push-pull legs rest, and then push, pull legs again, rest. That would be a solid approach. That would be my approach for the majority of the people out there. But we also need to take into consideration what your goals are. For some people, it might be to just put on as much muscle as humanly possible. They don't care where that muscle goes, they just wanna get massive. For other people, they might wanna be as aesthetic looking as possible. I mean, for someone like me, my goal is to just I'm more bothered about looking good, okay? Certain muscle groups, you know, standing out. And this is where it becomes a little bit of an issue because if you're a beginner, you don't really know what your strengths and your weaknesses are, okay? For everyone who's just starting off at the gym, every muscle group is a weak muscle group. So for them, they just need to be working on everything. You won't really know what your weak muscle groups are until you've been training for about three years or so or you put on like 50 pounds of muscle. Then you need to start looking at your training split and you need to figure out, okay, well, how do I change my training split so that I can work on the muscle groups, which for me are currently lagging. And this is where the push-pull legs routine can be a little bit problematic. Okay, let's take, for example, me. I noticed that my lower back is quite large. I've got a thick waist. My chest is very dominant, okay, to the point where it almost makes the rest of my body look out of proportion. So if I was doing push-pull legs, 
and let's say for example I was doing lots of deadlifts, lots of squats and so on, I would then start to notice that my lower back is just going to get really out of proportion, my waist is going to get a little bit thicker, my chest is gonna, again, be out of proportion because I'm doing chest more than I need to. There's no point in me doing chest every four, five days, okay? Because I'm just gonna continue to make it look out of proportion. So for me, I would look at my weak points. I'd say, okay, look, shoulders, for me, definite weak point. Back, you could argue as well, might be a little bit weak point. So doing a push-pull legs routine, not ideal for me because I'm doing too much chest and not enough shoulder work. And if we took, for example, somebody who has a poor set of arms and chest, then for them to go to the gym and continue to do the push-pull leg split, it's not gonna be enough stimulus necessarily for them to grow their arms if they're only doing like two bicep exercises, two tricep exercises at the end of their session, okay? The end of the session when they're more fatigued, okay? And they're only doing two exercises. For them, it might be more suitable for them to do a devoted full arm day or maybe even a fourth day of the push-pull leg split where they're just doing chest and arms. Okay, so that one session is fully focused on training their weaker muscle groups. The next thing you need to take into consideration is training intensity. So how hard do you train? Now I know this is very relative because everyone who goes to the gym thinks they train pretty hard. But, you know, what is hard for one person may be a walk in the park for somebody else. Let's say for example, if you take an intermediate trainer who thinks they train hard versus someone at the very end of the spectrum like Dorian Yates, who obviously thinks he trains hard, those two levels of intensity are drastically different. Okay, and this is very important when it comes to choosing your split and you know what split you could actually get away with doing. So let's take for example one end of the spectrum, Dorian Yates, who has like the craziest intensity when it comes to training. If he was to do a full body split, where in that session when he was doing a full body split, he might be doing you know three to four very heavy compound exercises. Imagine you're doing squats, you're doing deadlifts, you're doing like bench press, you're doing bent over row pull-ups. You do all those in one session, okay? With the weight he was lifting and the intensity he was lifting, it may take him days to recover from that one workout because all of the movements are just such big compound movements. Whereas if you took somebody who's a beginner or intermediate trainer, they're not gonna be lifting a huge amount of weight. The intensity is not gonna be up there. So the amount of recovery they would need from that session may only be a day, in which case, if they can recover in a day, then they could do that exact same workout again and be completely fine. Something else which is very important, which needs to be taken into consideration is just the overall enjoyment and satisfaction that you get from your training split. Because if you enjoy doing something, it's more than likely gonna be the case that you're gonna be more consistent with it. And when it comes to building a good physique, you need that consistency there, right? If you don't enjoy your split, then you're not gonna enjoy your sessions. And then you're probably just gonna throw in the towel and be like, no, it's not for me. I don't, I don't like doing stuff that I don't really wanna do. And I know obviously sometimes you have to suck it up and do what you need to do, but for most people, particularly beginners, or people that don't really like exercising, then get them doing a split which they like to do. And let's face it, everyone has their favorite muscle groups to train and their least favorite muscle groups to train. And often I've found that those people, let's say for example, who despise training legs, right? They like to go to the gym to get that upper body pump. They don't get the same thing when they train legs. And because they don't like training legs, they are almost afraid of it. They try and put it off. And if they put it off, then they're not doing what it, what it is that they need to do in order to build that physique that they want. So for that person, instead of giving them a full on leg day, I would just divide it and maybe give them, all right, one session is gonna be hamstrings and glutes. And then you're gonna team that up with another upper body muscle group. And then another session is gonna be, let's say for example, quads and calves. And then you combine that with more upper body exercises. And that way they don't have a full on leg workout, which they're gonna to dread to do, but two smaller leg workouts, which is more manageable for them, which is gonna still give them the desired results, which they want. And you know, when it comes to my training, you know, I love training arms. Some people don't like training arms, but I love going to the gym and just doing an absolutely filthy bicep and tricep workout, right? I love the pump. I like doing the exercises. And that's something which I want to continue doing. Could I, you know, still get the same results if I stopped doing the arm day and just added biceps and triceps to the end of a push and pull workout? Yes, I probably could, but I wouldn't enjoy it as much. I don't really like doing biceps and triceps at the end of a push and pull session. So enjoyment is something you need to take into consideration. You need to ultimately be doing something which you like doing, okay? For a lot of you guys, 
you know, you're not competing, you're not stepping on stage. So this isn't your job, your profession. It's a hobby. You know, you're doing this to look better. So you might as well enjoy the process as much as possible. If you are competing, you know, you're trying to be the best of the best. So, you know, you have to be like on stage for Mr. Olympia. Then you don't really have a say in what you like doing and what you don't like doing. You do what you have to do in order for you to look your very best, right? So it, enjoyment is kind of out the window. So those are my thoughts on training splits. Ultimately, once again, it all depends upon the individual. You know, if there was a perfect training split out there, which was going to deliver the best results for everyone, everyone would be doing it, but it doesn't work like that. I would say the most important factor would be an individual's goals and their strengths and their weaknesses. But obviously, if you're the type of person who's just started out, you're a beginner, you don't have strengths and weaknesses yet. You need to just focus on just putting on muscle everywhere, right? And for that person, they're probably going to be better off doing full body splits. Maybe a few years down the line, when you actually start to notice a few imbalances, then you change up your split. You design that split to help focus on building those weaker muscle groups. And then obviously divide it based upon how frequently you can go to the gym. And obviously your strengths and goals and weaknesses, they're all going to change over time. And as they change over time, so should your training split, right? So give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Training programs on my website, www.mikethurston.co.uk. And I'll see you guys soon.